Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this last the last study of this week um, in our morning studies. And we're going to continue our study of Judges chapter 10, Tola and Jair. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for all the things that you've been teaching us in these morning studies and for the time that we have here this morning to open your word together. We pray that um, you can help us to understand these things so that we can reveal your character and teach these things to others, that they can help us in our personal walk with you in bringing a, a power and a conviction uh, to our lives. Uh, we know, Lord, that um, there's much that we do not understand, and we need your help, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we need your power to obey your word and help us to walk in the path that you set before us. Be with each person uh, in the daily struggle, and uh, be with us now in this study is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Um, so yesterday, we, we actually progressed fairly well in our understanding of Tola and Jair. We established that there was a, a period of darkness that was um, related to um, our lack of understanding of what was going to happen at Nashville. So our prediction, we didn't know the result. And so it's after July 18th. And really that's what Tola and Jair are addressing. That is the first message arrives after July 18th or on July 18th. And, um, and this makes a lot of sense in how we have structured these lines. And we're gonna uh, continue looking at that. Now, some of the symbols that we had there, um, uh, related to the 23 and the 22 years. And we have them as a symbol of 45 years. We still haven't fully addressed that. We also, of course, addressed the 30-30-30, which gave us the 252 and 525. And um, so we're going to look at that again. Now, Again, there's not a lot of things that happen in this story of these two judges. Now, it's going to be followed by further disobedience and oppression, which, of course, is going to relate to what's going to happen next. But we need to finish off this. Um, well, I don't know where that is. What's that? Somebody's trying to phone me on my phone. Well, they're trying to phone me, not on my phone. I phone me like on Facebook or something. So if I go, yeah, never had that happen during the meeting. Anyway, somebody was trying to phone me, I guess. I don't even know my Facebook. Well, it's not open here. Okay, it's done. Yep. Okay. So what anyway, about your WhatsApp? Maybe it was WhatsApp. It's done with. Anyway, anyway I don't know. I don't know what that was. <clears throat> anyway, you heard it, right? I'm oh yeah. Sure you... <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to go to uh, this chart here again. And take a look at it because you know not a lot of events happened, but we took these symbols and addressed them. And uh, so we looked at this message of July 18th, and and basically that's that October 30th date. That is the date that we have this after July 18th paper is published. That is, I sent it out to everyone. And, um, and then we put uh, the formalization, or that's the formalization, we put the empowerment with December 6, 2020. That is, that's the rejection of that paper by FFA. Um, 
And it also ends up illustrating uh, the truthfulness of the paper. Now, why is that? Why does, why does December 6, 2020, why would we put that as the empowerment? How does that give us the empowerment of the after J July 18th, 2020 paper? I know Dwight was the one who suggested that that was the empowerment. So you may not have understood his reasoning. Okay, I'm just going to go look at the paper here briefly. So I know. Uh, And Angela says, I noticed uh, on reviewing yesterday's class, I noticed 13th day, 13th month. Um, that's dealing with March 27th. I just got to read. Them. Um, thought of 3113 BC. And 3113 BC, it's not AM, it's BC. That is um, where the Mayan calendar begins. Yeah, so that's what that is. 3113. And it relates more to Ezekiel um, uh, um, Ezekiel 2012, which is, so it goes from 3113 BC to 2012. The Mayan calendar is going to span that 1,872,000 days. Anyway, we're going to look at this here uh, after July 18th. Now, this paper, um, I begin with the idea we were wrong and I explain why. So we were wrong. Um, but we had, there's reasons why we were wrong. So the first one is we already had time in the movement. And the second one is there was a deception that went on. That is, the movement was deceived by Parminder and Tess. And these were manipulated. The fact that we had time in our movement was the idea that we could actually predict time. Now, I mean, that's not really a very logical uh, conclusion. Right? Just because we had time in the movement and we could look at past events and see that they had time attached to them didn't mean that we could predict uh, dates in the future with their events. But it did mean that the movement had to make a prediction based upon time. I mean, in the end, that's why we time set, because it was in God's providence. And uh, the argument I make is that the Millerites themselves should not have time set if they had taken the statements that are being used by those that oppose uh, time setting at all, right? right? Because people will quote, what what passages will they often quote when it comes to the idea that we can't set time? What what did they quote in their December 6, 2020 paper? Which verses in the Bible? Anybody know offhand these verses in the Bible against time setting? Okay, give me more specific uh, so put Matthew 24. Um, there's a few different verses. One is, you know not the day or the hour, right? No man knoweth the day or the hour, not even the son, but the father. It's not for you to know the times or the seasons that uh, the Lord has placed in his own power. Right? Now, if that was true, that that was against time setting, would that not also be true against the Millerite setting time? Um, yes. Right. So you, you can't take these statements in the Old Testament just at, at face value and say, well, time setting 
is is forbidden because Jesus and and the disciples who talk about time setting um, they're not they're not putting it in the context of a, after October twenty second eighteen forty four they're just saying there's no time setting right as far as knowing when the Lord is going to come so you could not use those verses but if you're going to use them they would speak just as much against the Millerites as they would against us because there is not a qualification there as to when you cannot time set. So, so there's a real problem when you take these, these verses and just give them a blanket statement that you can't set time because that would undermine the Millerite history. But in some ways, we can actually say that the Millerites were wrong in setting time. That is, they were setting time for the second coming of Christ. But it was not wrong to set an end to the prophetic periods that were given in Scripture. Because those prophetic periods given in Scripture were not talking about the second coming of Christ. They were talking about events that are prophesied and when they would end. The very clearly time prophecies in the Bible that extend past the time of Christ. Agreeable. Yeah. Now, when they set these dates and they predicted an event, they got the wrong event, but they had the right date. That is, God in his providence led them to predict time. And, and Alan White's argument basically was... Um, they needed to be disappointed. They needed to go through that experience. And that, of course, would apply to us as well. We have to go through that experience. <clears throat> right. So then this came to an understanding of the lines. Ellen White's going to talk about the parable of the ten virgins. And we had always taken this that we're going to repeat Millerite history to the very letter. But of course, she doesn't say that. She says the parable has been and will be fulfilled to the very letter, for it is a special application to this time. So that means in order to understand how our time parallels Millerite history, we need to understand it in context of the parable of the Ten Virgins. And Ellen White clearly points out that there is a process we have the going forth of the virgins which represents the first angel's message and then we have the uh, tarrying time and th that's going to be the second angel's message and just it's sort of simple form and there are two different groups being tested that is all of them are protestants but there is some that in the tarrying time are going to be tested, and those are the Millerites. Right? So there's these two groups being tested. And you can see, of course, when we're looking at these lines and how we're understanding uh, Tola and Jair, or any of the lines of the judges, any of the way lines that we have, we have this structure. So, so we can see that the, this idea here, this was the main part of this paper, now, it's not going to really be addressed um, by the December 6, 2020 uh, declaration. They're, they're going to address the whole idea of time setting at all, and also the symbolic use of dates. They're going to reject that. Now, <clears throat> um, what I ended up doing here was showing that we have Millerite history, First, second, and third angels' message. Then we have four generations, and then we have our history. This is just the this is Ellen White's line. Now, really, Ellen White's line has the Sunday law. It doesn't have 1989 and 911. It doesn't have the four generations. That's because of the falling away that happens in this first generation. And um, and so we have this repeat of history. So this is the parable of the ten virgins being fulfilled to the very letter. So we can see the SDAs and the Levites.
Those are just the members of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, not the organization. So the organization is first tested. It fails at 9-11. And then now we're in the time that the Levites are being tested. That is SDAs. And, and I probably should you know, put the Seventh-day Adventist organization and then the Seventh-day Adventist members. And then we come to the Sunday law where we know that the Adventist church is going to stand on the wrong side of the issue. And then we have the loud cry and the close of probation. And then I deal with the prediction before midnight and what that means. And so I go through uh, Samuel Snow's letters. And, um, and then I deal with how that history paralleled our history. So Samuel Snow's letters um, cover the same period of time. And, and then I deal with July 18th and the how we came to July 18th to begin with, with the prophecies of Revelation 9 and Ezekiel, and that these then helped us to understand our lines. And so after July 18th, I have this structure. Um, and we can see that there's this prediction before midnight. So this is Samuel Snow's letters. And this here I put as 2014 to July 18th. So I'm, I'm taking a different parallel of Samuel Snow's letters. I'm not going 2018 to um, 2019. And then we have this Raffi and Paneum. So we know that there's this future Raffi and Paneum, whatever those are, whether January 6th was the actual raffia in this idea or not, or whether it's a smaller line, we haven't established yet. Now, I put this here as sunset, 9-11 is sunset. Um, but one thing that we could do now with this is we could take this 9-11, which we didn't do then, and we can just flip it to be 11-9, right? People understand that, that we can take this line here that we have, and we can take 9-11 and flip it to be 11-9. That's, that's one thing we've learned recently. Yes, to your question, yes. Yeah, okay. So I hope everyone understands that, that that's what we've, we've come to understand. And, um, and I think it's one of the most important things that we've learned in the last couple of years, because it helps us understand the separation of these lines. Um, so I deal with the idea of what new light is and that 9-11 met the criteria for new light because it made old light shine brighter. So that's gonna be the idea and reject Parminder's basis for time setting. So, if we look at this then, this October 30th, uh, 2020 date, as the publication of that paper on Ju after July 18th. To, oops, I hit the wrong, shared the wrong thing. This. The December tw uh, 6, 2020 declaration it's going to it's going to reject this paper partly it just ignores the main argument that is it's it's not going to address the lines at all and um bronwyn when she wrote me about the paper and her criticisms of it um it was as if she was reading a different paper than the one that she claimed to be critiquing that is she took um Things that are context? Well, things on the periphery of the paper and address them, but never address the body of the paper. Yeah. So, uh, and, and so the body of the paper really had to do with how we understood our lines. And it was quite clear that we were wrong in what we did in time setting, just as the Millerites were wrong, but we were correct to have done it. That is, we were led by God to do so. And if you make an argument, that you God can't do that, then you have to find an explanation for Millerite history if you're an Adventist. And if you attack Millerite history on that basis, 
You would then also have to take a long, hard look at Christianity in general, the claims of, of the New Testament regarding time. And you would have to look at, you know, books like Revelation and say, how can Revelation be setting time when Christ says that we can't set time? So, you, But in the end, you would really have to be questioning the entire Bible. So, you know, if we were correct in July 18th, that means that we can preserve all that we have as Christians. If July 18th was wrong, then we have to question Adventism and Christianity. And, and I think that's where people logically will go um, who were part of this movement and have rejected July 18th. It's hard for them to maintain being Adventists in any real meaningful way or even Christians in any meaningful way. Though some people will still or persist in being part of a church. Okay. Um, so are people happy with December 6, 2020 as being the empowerment? I mean, we could argue that um, some other date is the empowerment. We could, you know, argue for December 25th, or we could argue for January 6th. Um, I mean, December 25th, we're going to have that, the event in Nashville, the bombing. But those are both external. Okay. So they're external. Here with December 6th, 2020, you have an internal event, something within the movement itself. Right. And the other thing about this, these dates that we have here, especially when we get after, like March 27th, 2021, we don't have an event other than we have a study that is done, right? And Correct. Yeah. And so that study then would relate to this. And, and on the March 27th, I'm trying to remember what that was there. Um. Uh, I didn't end up keeping it there. That was the week of Christ study, and it was the 13th study on the week of Christ. So that matches up with the 13th day, 13th month. Now, technically, it's March 26th, but... It's going to go into, uh, you know, March 27th. And um, we dealt with the Metonic cycle, prophetic years versus solar years. And we dealt with the 273 and the 2,569 days. And we also dealt with the destruction of Jerusalem, uh, that it was August 6th. So there was some things that we addressed in this week of Christ study um, uh, that were important. And, and this was, uh, so we're, we're just going to say that that's in the arrival of the second message. So then we have to determine really what that second message is and why we're marking this March 27th, 2021 date. So what is the second message? If we understand that this, the apprehension, the uncertainty regarding what would happen after July 18th is what the first message, that's the darkness. And the first message addresses that. Um, and we have this, finally, this rejection of this message, right? But it's formalization and rejection, which ends up being its empowerment. And then we have, uh, March 27th, 2021. So that's going to be the next date that we had marked 
you know, on our major structure of our lives. It's going to be 252 days later. Right? So after July 18th, we have 252 days. It brings us to March 27th. And then we're going to have... Um, Uh, this this message arriving. So what would that message be based upon the study of the week of Christ? The week of Christ study on March 27th, on the 13th day of the 13th month. Now we picked March 27th because of the division of the 252 and the 525, though... You can see that uh, this third angel's message, the way we have it right now, we put March 15th, 2023. That was just yesterday's date. But we might have to move that out of the way. And, and I probably would. I would probably just move it over here. Like this and put some other stuff here. But... Um, now, if we go to uh, 525 days from March 27th, 2021, that brings us to what date? I'm just going to put it in there. So if we we're just going to take this literally, when I put it in here, it's going to be, what was it, September 3rd or something? September 3rd, is it September? Anybody remember? Obviously, everybody's having trouble remembering this one. Yeah, well, somebody could look it up. I'm going to look it up here. So if we go 525, it's going to be September 3rd, 2022. So that's correct there. And that's going to be the sixth day of the sixth month. Okay, so. <clears throat> it that way. Okay, so if we did that there, September 3rd, 2022, is that significant at all? It does, it is a Sabbath. And if we look at the studies that were done then, Uh, Dwight does a study that day. Um, and the study, the Friday night study that I do there is on uh, the fourth study of the three angels' messages of righteousness by faith. And is there anything that we can find of significance with that date? What, what did Dwight speak on on that day? Well, he's, um, let me see here. Um, I'd have to look into it more closely. Um, uh, 
Zephaniah chapter 2. He's mostly reading from a review and herald article, September 16th, 1909. So that's what he's mostly doing for the first part of it. And then a manuscript 3, 1861, dealing with Brother, Brother Cottrell. Now, there was quite a bit in that on the study with with Zephaniah. But, you know, we would be dealing with the third angel's message arriving. Now, um, the studies that I did Friday night, so those would still be included in that date, September 3rd. Right. If we're taking the biblical day, the sixth day of the sixth month. And uh, so the study that I did there. Um, uh, let me see here. So we're going to be dealing with, because in Joan's study, he was dealing with the work of the Holy Spirit. And um, I'm going to deal with justification, sanctification, glorification on the lines. And I, I deal with, uh, so the the basic lines in Millerite history and how they relate to our lines. And so it's a pretty basic understanding there. So I deal with sin, righteousness, and judgment from John 16. And um, so we're just discussing Righteousness by faith, which, of course, we would have been doing for a while. So whether that's significant or not. Um, As far as I know, I don't have any major papers or anything at that time, so. Just checking things here. So, so I don't have anything. Um, particular for that date. So that's all I can say. We don't have anything that we can mark on that date. So we just have it as a date. Right. So the, the, the only symbol that I see there is this sixth day of the sixth month. Um, I don't see any other significance in it. So, so whether that's what we're supposed to do with that date or not. Now, the 718 days going to our time, um, Sorry, that's my calculator blocking the screen there. Um, so that was going to yesterday. Well, the sixth day of the sixth month is a symbol of in the sixth year of the sixth, the sixth, the sixth year, the sixth month, and the fifth day is Ezekiel chapter eight. 
but that is going to end on the sixth day of the sixth month, that vision. And so the sixth day of the sixth month represents the Sunday law. And that would be the symbol that we would use there. Does that help? Understanding, uh, understanding the sixth day of the sixth month. Yeah, so six day of the six month in six, six, six year, two plus two, okay. <clears throat> now we have, um, other, other things dealing with, so we had March 15th and we had March 15th because it's 718 days, and that's when we first put that date there. So we have March 15th. Now, whether March 15th, we could mark now as the arrival of the third angel. Can we mark that as yesterday? So then we would have to explain how we address this structure. So I, I don't think I'm going to put September 3rd there, uh, at least in, as an actual date, but as a symbol. I still think maybe we could put March 15th here. And we can have this here. So we've got this as a symbol, 525 days. It brings us to September 3rd, the sixth day of the sixth month, but we don't have an event for it. We just have a symbol there, which I think is a fine symbol. Um, now, how do we address this 525? If, if we're going to say that this is 252 days, which it is, now we have 525. Any ideas? Okay. So Stephen says September 3rd, 2022 was 777 days from July 18, 2020. Yes. That would be the that would be the fact that we have this 252 and 525. So we're going to have that 777 days. But it's the sixth day of the sixth month. So that's just basic based on this structure. We're taking that 777 days. Um, now, Stephen says Colin had noted it in his presentation that day. So maybe we need to look to Colin's presentation that day. So what did Colin present on September 3rd or September 3rd? <coughs> 2022? Stephen, do you have a comment on that? Comment on that? I'm not getting any sound. I just hear myself. I just hear my okay. So. Okay. So if we're going to say um, we don't know what he presented on that day. Um, Somebody could try to find that out. Maybe Iran, you could probably find that. What was the date again? September 3rd, 2022. So Colin noted that it was 777 days from July 18th when he did his presentation on that day. Okay. So, you know, maybe we can keep that date there if we have some event. But then we'd have to figure out what the third angel's message is. Now, I'm trying to remember, you know, what he would have presented on September 22nd. I mean, I know it would have been about the coming election. <clears throat> But 
but I don't know specifically what he presented. <clears throat> and, and if that's the case, then we would have to, um, you know, try to understand what, what this all means, because these are messages regarding after July 18, 2020. Now, what we haven't done here is looked at the formalization and the empowerment of the message that was given on March 27th, 2021. And we're going to say that's going to relate to the presentation that we did on the week of Christ study. So when we deal with that week of Christ study, we're going to be dealing with the 273. And of course, uh, we know from March 27th, uh, 21, 273 days go to December. Uh, and uh, that's going to go to December 25th, 2021. 273 days. Any ideas here at this point? Because this is the message of Tola and Jair. It's the message of after July 18, 2020. Sorry, bro, Mike. I, I got an underrated computer right now. Okay. And so you can't figure out anything. What about Iran? Still looking. Okay. <clears throat> Because um, I'm trying to remember back then, so I'm pretty sure it was addressing um, the coming election. But specifically, I, I think I know what study it was because he he did have um, uh, the December 25th dates in there, um, the one in 2021 and the one in 2022. Um, so there was a number of things in that study, if I'm remembering which study it was. Okay, so while we're, we're thinking about that, if we're going to look at this March 27th, and we're saying that this is relating to the week of Christ study, and it's number 13 in the week of Christ study, and it's going to be addressing the 273, it's going to be addressing um, uh, the 273, what was it addressing specifically again? And the August uh, August um, sixth, and also the Metonic cycle. So the August sixth, seventy A.D. is the destruction of Jerusalem, and not August seventh, seventy A.D. So originally, I had looked at August seventh, and in the week of Christ study, it was how we were counting the number of years. So when I counted the number of years, I did it cardinally, and I came to August seventh, and that was confirming the uh, the. Tenth day of the fifth month, but actually it's August 6th. It's the 10th day of the fifth month. And so that would bring an ordinal count of 468 um, years or days, depending which way you're looking at it, from the cross, <clears throat> which marks 538 for those that understand what I'm talking about. So we had this August 6th date, and that ties us to... Um, the 26th day of the fourth month with the bombing of Hiroshima, which ties us to the July 18, 2020 date. So we can see how that would relate to these lines, how that would fit. So it, it addresses the past, but it's also addressing the future. Now, I would argue then that the formalization of the message or the empowerment of the message would have to be December 25th, 2021. And, and, and I would say it's actually the empowerment. So I would have put it here. 
And that's going to be Stephen's uh, revelation, if we want to put it that way, uh, regarding um, the 777 years. <clears throat> so it's going to go either here or there, right? So this would be 273 days, if we put it there. And then it's going to be 252 days to March or to September 3rd. So let's do it this way here for now. We're going to put call in study here. So moving this around again. So we'll have to understand how that relates, the study yesterday. <clears throat> okay, any any more thoughts? Not yet. And, and you can see how this is going to be 273 and 252. Wherever we put the December 25th, it's going to be 273 days from March 27th. And it's going to be 252 days from December 25th to September 20 to September 3rd. Right? Because it has to add up to 777. Um, so if we put this as a formalization, We, we still need to understand what this message is about, what March 27th, 2021 is about. I mean, we know it relates to our lives. We're specifically just saying the only thing we have there is the study that we did on the week of Christ on the 13th day of the 13th month. That week of Christ study uh, becomes an important part of how we're addressing all of this history. And it's the 13th study on the week of Christ, which lines up with there. So then we would have to have, if we had this as the formalization, we'd have to have some event and we could even put Odilio study, let's say, as that's going to be the 49 days later. Because we already have these on these lines. So we would put that February 12th. Um, 2022, and this is going to be, um, it's going to be seven weeks after December 25th.
Any more thoughts? Anybody got any verbal things they can say? <clears throat> then we have to understand how the 45 years relates to that. I know that we're looking at the progression of this line, taking this from March 27th forward. Mm -hmm. I was taking a look based on this with the 252, which would be July 18th to the March 27, 2021. Because if, I mean, in, in this in this situation, we should be able to look to divide this so you have 126 and 126 to to be able to look for further validation of this entire situation so 126 days passed which would be november 21st of 2020 okay now i'm looking at this because that was a Sabbath. Yeah. We went through <clears throat> several things in the Friday night Zoom study, which was regarding study the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And around that time there was there was quite a bit that was going on. <laughs> Excuse me. You and Heidi were yet recovering from about which we believed to be with COVID because you were having. Yeah. Well, some we had cancer. COVID. We had COVID. Yeah. Yep. At that time. So I was just going back over some of the emails that had gone on at that time. Hmm. Yeah. And the thing about, um, of course, this all the stuff that was going on with FFA prior to right. December 6th. Yeah. And that's going to be, um, was that two weeks or, or three weeks? December 6th. It's three weeks, isn't it? Rough. Uh, it's 15 days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two weeks. So there's two weeks, two weeks before that Sabbath, because I look at that whole weekend, the Friday to the Sunday, the three days. Okay, so, so Colin's study is about Trump bringing in the Sunday law and the November 8th election. Yeah, so that's what I thought. Um, now, so if we're looking at that September 3rd as a third angel's message arriving, um, you know, how would that relate if it's Colin's study on Trump? To try to understand Tola and Jay here. Because this is about after July 18th. These are about the messages of after July 18th.
Now, uh, interesting thing there, um, dealing with, um, so it's November 26th. November 21st. 21st, okay. So that's what we're looking at, November 21st. Right, November 21st, okay. So uh, just before that, I published the paper on the last president. Right. Now, um, now Guy is going to respond to that. He says, thanks for sharing, brother. The difficulty and complexity, in my opinion, is connecting Daniel 11 to prophetic line with the book of Esther. Which I, I find that uh, pretty odd that he finds that difficult. Um, so he's just saying you can't connect uh, Trump to Xerxes. Basically is what he's saying. Yet it's pretty clear that Xerxes goes and fights against Greece and loses. Um, so can we try to say here that um, the, what's happening in this line in Tola and Jair? So it's, it's, it's addressing the, the problems that we're having in understanding um, July 18th, right? Now we have this 45 years as a symbol. And of course that 45 years leads us to the first day of the first month. Correct? Yeah. Not? Okay. So it leads us to the first day of the first month as a symbol, which is going to relate to the week of Christ study. Um, but now we've we've taken these way marks and we've said, okay, we're going to place them within a structure of 777 days. And and Colin presents a study on September 3rd, 777 days later. Now his his address is Trump, right? So it's not that his view of Trump is correct. Um, and we know that he already introduced Trump on. December 25th, 2021, right? He's going to introduce that study dealing with Trump. So then 252 days after that, he's going to present this study again, dealing with Trump. Now, how many other studies he's presented on Sabbaths dealing with Trump? I don't know, you know, that we're recorded but it's on the sixth day of the sixth month and it's addressing the sunday law trump bringing in the sunday law but there is something about this after july 18th is that this is us sorting out these events and then we have to address what does the presentation yesterday have to do with all of this So that's what we, we don't know. I know this is a little bit, okay. People have to do the homework to verify July 18 to September 3rd is 777 days. So, okay. So what are you saying here? So 2-22-24. I'm going to say December 25th, 2021 to September 3rd is 258 days. That was from his presentation. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so this is what Colin said at um, 2.22.24. Is that the time stamp? Okay. So that's the time stamp. Okay. So he says, 
I'm going to say December 25th, 21 to, to September 3rd is 252 days, right? Which is correct. Okay. That's a two and a half hour presentation. Dealing with the Sunday law and Trump. So what does that say about the third angel's message that arrives in this movement after July 18th? So we have the 777 days. Now, to say it arrives, it must be something more specific than what was on December 25th, 2021. A part of it is the recognition that that's 777 days. And it's 252 days from his first presentation. So if, if Colin wasn't acknowledging that or noticing that, I don't think it would be as significant. So that to me is why it's significant. So it relates to this structure, to understanding this structure. Anything else? Now, um, the number of days from September 3rd, 2022 to yesterday. Um, this in here. I don't know why I keep using these dashed lines, but kind of like them. Yeah, it's 193 days. And of course, we can see that's the 391 backwards. Okay. I'm just going to put a question mark here. I don't know what that means. Oops. Okay, so we have this um, structure now. So what does this all mean? Tola and J here. Can we... Can we leave it for now and just look at what's going to happen after Tola and Jay here? I think we're going to have to give some further consideration to it, but it might do us good to proceed further. On this right now or to move ahead? move ahead okay yeah that's that's kind of what i'm thinking now i mean this study's a little bit slow here today in the sense that we're, we're not doing lots of talking we're just kind of thinking 
But I think when we look at the further disobedience and oppression. Now, the one thing that we should note here too, um, Judges 10.5, when Jair dies. I mean, that's the 10th day of the fifth month, is it not? Or would we say it's the fifth day of the 10th month? So anybody know what the 10th day of the fifth month is? What is, what is that marking? Tenth day of the fifth month is the destruction of the temple, right? In 586 and in 70 AD. And it was, the key, it was the key that helped us understand that the prophetic mirror that we saw in the week of Christ was correct. It confirmed that there was 468 years from the cross to the destruction of Jerusalem in, in the days, right, of the week of Christ. So we could put 70 AD as the 10th day of the fifth month, which is August 6th. So I think that's an important point regarding Jair. So now we're going to move ahead and we go to Judges 6. The children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served not him. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon. And that year they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. Eighteen years, all the children of Israel that were on the other side, Jordan, in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin, and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God, and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines? The Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Minoites did oppress you, and ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and served other gods, wherefore I deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen, and let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Israel were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. So you're going to have the children of Ammon are in Gilead, and then you're going to have uh, the children of Israel in Mizpah. Um, so Mitzpah is this place, two places in Palestine, uh, means in pause. Uh, it's also a watchtower. <clears throat> so it's the place in Gilead north of Jabbok and the location of Laban's claim, Cairn, right? So this is going to be where they are. I don't think we're going to say it's in Mount Hermon because of where this battle is. It's in Gilead, right? So it must be the watchtower there in Gilead. Correct? Is that how we would understand it? So then they asked this question, and the people and the princes of Gilead said unto one another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? and he shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And then we're going to get Jephthah. So we remember Jephthah is this Gileadite 
who uh, is the son of a harlot and um, so Gilead's wife had sons and they're going to thrust out Jephthah. So we know that this was about uh, this message and and you know all the, all the stuff dealing with chronology this is what's going to be uh, so we, we studied this before right so I take this kind of personally as I do all the things that deal with the chronology, but also personally, I was pushed out and, but yet they're going to call this message, the message of July 18th back in. Right. So I look at this as what happened in 2018. And um, then uh, Jeff is going to be called and he's, they're going to want to make him a leader. Right. And we're not, not talking literally about people here. We're talking about messages. And um, but he refuses. Right. But he's still going to uh, deliver them. So he's not he doesn't want to be made. Well, I shouldn't say he refuses. In a sense, he he doesn't refuse. It depends how you look at it. Um, but Jephthah, if we're going to go into this, we're going to have to figure out how how we're going to address this. But this line is going to go a lot further back. At least I think it is, but maybe not. Um, probably going to have to read this. And then we got to Jeff's tragic vow. That was the part that was troubling to us. Okay. So before we get into Jeff's, anything about the, the period in where um, there's further disobedience and oppression because that would relate to our time now, would it not? It would still relate to the after the July 18th um, line. Correct. Okay. So that's how I understand it. We're, we're going to keep it. It's this chapter. It's going to be connected to Tola and Jair. It's called the period of 18 years, and we had 23 years, um, 22 years, which was 45 years, and then we add 18 years, and how many years do we get? We get 63 years, and the 63 years, are those a symbol? What's the symbol of 63? Primary symbol is Pentecost because it's the sixth day of the third month. Yeah. So Samuel's got that there. Um, we know it also relates to um, the 63 uh, days from September 3rd, September 7th, which is um, 9 times 7, which is 63. And that brings us to November 9th. So, so all, all together, we can look at this, this period of time, Judges. Chapter 10 is going to give us a period of 63 years. <clears throat> so if we take chapter 11, Jephthah, we can say that this could begin on November 9th, 2019. But it does reach further back because obviously uh, the message is going to be cast aside, but it's, it's the time in which the message is then accepted. So, so it's dealing with that 63 days, right? The preceding parts dealing with that 63 days as a symbol. It's also relating to our time. So it, it has both ways. We can put it at the beginning, at the end. But we're going to say that it, it's representing the time we're in. 
so the story of Jephthah, um, we're going to go through and read this here. Now, one of the things about Jephthah is it's 11.1. What's the significance of 11.1 in relation to the 63? So it's January 11th, 2020, which is 63, 2019, right? So Jeff noticed this. Yeah. So he noticed this, that he could go from September 7th. I noticed the 63 days going to November 9th. And then Jeff noticed the 63 days from November 9th to January 11th. And this is going to be the end of this Levitical structure um, that first began on June 9th, 2018. So there's 63 days to August 11th, then 63 days to October 13th, 2018. And then there's the, um, the period from October 13th to... Um, to September 7th. That's actually going to be a period of 47 weeks, 329 days, at the center of which is March 27th, 2019. And so that's the center of this Levitical chiasm is this March 27th, 2019 date. And then we had um, September 7th, 63 days to... November 9th, and then 63 days to January 11th. And, and then Jeff had connected to March 27th, 2021, uh, 441 days or 63 weeks. So we can see that Jephthah relates to this message to the Levites, to this Levitical line by this symbol, and relates to the 63 days beforehand. Now, it is possible then we could start this line of Jephthah uh, on January 11th, 2020, uh, 2020, or we could start it on November 9th, or we could start it some other place. But we have this symbol here of January 11th, which would be 2020. So we would then take this story um, of the history of Jephthah as a preamble to what's going to happen here, right? So it's going to talk all about what happened to Jephthah earlier. And he's going to dwell in the land of Tov. They have a cob here. Hebrew, we normally say Tov nowadays. And that's the land of goodness, right? Right, good. Apparently east of the Jordan, it says in our dictionary. And they're going to go and fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Now, um, now, we know when Jeff marks January 11th, he doesn't do it on January 11th, 2020. He does it sometime later. But it is a recognition of this entire structure. So Jeff recognizes this structure, and he recognized it on January 11th, or related to the presentation that Daniel Fontenot did on January 11th. Um, so January 11th, uh, let 
I mean, if somebody could look up that presentation that Daniel Fontenot did, it'd be kind of nice. <clears throat> and, and so we would have to say that this, uh, they're calling Jephthah to fight would relate to this whole history of the message to the Levites. Are people following what I'm saying? So they say to, unto Jephthah, come and be our captain, that we may fight the children of Ammon. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did ye not hate me and expel me out of your father's house? And why are ye come unto me now? Why when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mayest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, if ye bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, the Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. Then Jephthah went up with the elders of, of Gilead, and the people made him head, and captain over them. Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king and the children of Ammon saying, what hast thou to do with me that thou art come against me to fight in my land? And so we remember when we gone, went through this, the king of Ammon is going to answer that um, Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from Arnon, even unto Jabbok and unto Jordan. Now, therefore, restore those lands again peacefully, peaceably. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon. And he said unto him, Thus saith Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let us pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not hearken thereto. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, and he would not consent, and Israel abode in Kadesh. And they went along through the wilderness, encompassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, but came not within the border of Moab, for Arnon was the border, border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the king of Heshbon. And Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land into my place. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel. And they smote them. So Israel possessed all the lands of the Amorites the inhabitants of that country. And they possessed all the coasts of the Amorites from Arnon, even unto Jabbok, and from the wilderness, even unto Jordan. So now the Lord God of Israel hath dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. And shouldest thou possess it? Wilt not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God giveth thee to possess? So whomsoever the Lord our God shall drive out from before us, them will we possess. And now art thou anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel or did he ever fight against them? While Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns and Aurora and her towns and in all the cities that be along the coast of Arnon, 300 years, why therefore did ye not recover them within that time? Therefore I have not sinned against thee, but thou doest me wrong to war against me. The Lord to judge be judged this day between the children of Israel and the children of Ammon. Howbeit the king of the children of Ammon hearkened not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. So what was it that we connected with this story? 
So we have the 300 years. Stephen, how did we address the 300 years here? If you're able to talk. <clears throat> Well, your mic shows your mic's on, but I don't hear anything, Stephen. Okay. So we don't hear you. So I guess you can't talk. <laughs> so this is going to be the 300 years, not the 300 years. Um, for the Ark being in um, Shiloh, right? It's going to be the 300 years that precede that. So that's going to be, um, for that period of time, they have 300 years. They did not come and fight to uh, possess that land. So the 300 years, of course, we relate to all the different 300s. Okay, so Stephen says something's wrong with his settings, that his mic is not working. Okay, sometimes you can go and just change your mic settings, but anyway. So we can't help Stephen help us too easily. Um, now, as far as this story, I mean, this goes back to when the Israelites, Israelites crossed the Jordan River. And we know... Um, uh, that, uh, that this is now a period of 300 years. This 300 years is mentioned in the Bible. Ellen White mentions another period of 300 years where the Ark was in Shiloh, and they, they're not exactly the same period. There's an overlapping of these 300 years. Okay. Anything else about this story that we should note? I mean, we obviously have, we looked at Balaam and his attempting to curse Israel. And can we put this back to, um, so if we're going to say that this is Judges chapter 11, uh, or Judges chapter 11 is January 11th, and we look at this message, this message is going to have to do with um, what happened with the rebellion at Baal Peor, right? And we're going to mark that back to that period from August 29th to September 7th, 2019, right? So we can, we can go back to that history. So there is an, a message here that is symbolized by the children of Ammon. And who are the children of Ammon? They're children of Lot, right? Okay, so it was approaching doom, part five on January 11th. Um, and we might have to take a look at what specifically was in that study. <clears throat> so that was Daniel Fontenot's study. Um, it's on a horizontal tree YouTube page. It's still in the process of, of processing. So Iran uploaded that video for us to look at. So I guess it's no longer at the FFA site, or is it, Iran? Or are you just putting it there for convenience, even if it's still there? It's not there, okay. Does the Wayback, Wayback Machine uh, show it at all? Have you tried that? 
Okay, not sure, but doubtful. Sometimes it does show the video, sometimes it doesn't. Okay, okay. So, so that's Daniel uh, Fontenot's study, uh, which we can look at, <clears throat> the approaching doom. Now, and, and what specifically Jeff saw in that study, I can't remember, but it, uh, it was when he believed that he understood Daniel chapter 11, that there was an understanding of Daniel chapter 11 that was very significant. And so I'd have to look back at Jeff's studies to figure out what that was. But at the time, I wasn't really sure what he was referring to. So, so we can t- say that this all brings us to this structure of the Levitical chiasm. That's what this message of Jephthah does. And this Levitical structure, it, it, doesn't particularly directly relate to July 18th in the sense of it's not about July 18th. It's more about March 27th. Now, if we were to um, uh, draw a line, so I'm just going to borrow this other line. Um, and that's what we're going to start doing on Sunday. So we're going to we're going to borrow this line, and we're going to start looking at it. And so, for people who want to look ahead, what we're going to say is that this line here. So I just duplicated the slide. That's all I did. Um, like this, I'm just going to say that we're going to put this as Jephthah. That somewhere in Jephthah, we're going to need that um, January 11th date. We have to decide where that's going to be. So I don't know what we're going to do with it, but I haven't changed anything yet. Um, so we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to take this line of Jephthah, and we're going to somehow address it as far as the structure, because that's what we've been doing. We've gone through the study and we need to remind ourselves about what we learned. Um, But this, this line is going to address January 11th. And then we have to figure out what that's about. We know it's about March 27th. So exactly how this line, where it starts, doesn't necessarily mean it starts on January 11th, but that's what it's addressing. Now, when we, I know our time is sort of up, but um, when we looked at the line of the judges, we had uh, Jephthah's being December 6, 2020. <clears throat> but now we're saying that it relates to January 11th, 2020. So, so it must also relate to this, December 6th. So it relates to December 6th and to January 11th. Those two are tied together. So that's what we're going to have to look at on Sunday. Any final comments before we close with prayer? Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this study this morning. Uh, We ask for your continued presence in our lives. And um, we pray for each person. Please bring us together again for a study tomorrow night, where possible, as we continue to look at the messages from A.T. Jones. And um, we pray, Lord, that you can help us to represent you today. May your angels watch over us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.